President Museveni, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Okay, listen, I want to start by asking you, you know, 80% of your country is under 35 years old. They weren't even born when you first came into office. And they really seem to want to change. They want jobs. Why do you think you deserve another term? Well, because uh, I am the one who enabled the 80% to survive childhood diseases. And we have given them more uh, education. And we have given them a base for, econ for the economy. And we have uh, a good budget. And we can support them, we can support uh, th th those youth. So, Mr. President, as I said, they want jobs. Uganda today remains one of the poorest countries in the whole wide world and depends hugely on foreign assistance. I want to ask you, 35 years ago, you said the problem of Africa in general and Uganda in particular is not the people, but leaders who want to overstay in power. Now, you've seen that your country has now changed the two-term rule. They've changed the age limit. And there you are going for a sixth term. Why do you think that's a good thing? You should check your, your facts. Mm -hmm. It is the fifth fastest growing economy in the whole world. You should check your facts. It's about to become a middle-income country. Now, regarding the politics, the management of society, Yes, I said staying in power for a long time without democracy. Without democracy. Man, mark those words. But, but if it is uh, the democratic will of the people, because we have got so many things to deal with, uh, we need, if we need all hands on board, then it's uh, correct that we have all, all hands on board. You call yourself still a freedom fighter. I want to read to you the words of your main opponent, Bobby Wine, young man who seems to have energized young crowds. He basically said in one of his songs, what was the purpose of liberation when we can't have a peaceful transition? Freedom fighters become dictators. He sang that in 2018 in the song Freedom. He has a point, right? Uh, that is uh, wrong. We have been having transition. We have been having transition by having elections. Every five years we have elections. And if the people didn't want to, to, to give us a mandate, they would vote us out. Well, we've seen it. We've interviewed Bobby Wine. It's all over the international press that he has been you know, attacked. A member of his team has been killed. He is not able to go to big rallies. He's been jailed. How is that fair in terms of a level playing field for contesting the elections? Well, first of all, we have saved our people from dying in big numbers from Corona. Have you heard of Corona? Corona uh, has, been I... <laughs> has been killing people and has killed very many people in Europe and in the United States. Here, we have only lost about 300 people now. We have been able, and we have been able to do that by stopping public gatherings. Now, Mr. Bobby Wine was one of the people who was defying that. In other, in other words, causing the death of, of uh, the spread of the, of the virus. That's how he ran into conflict with the law. That's, wh that's how it all started. And then they, they tried to blackmail the country by rioting. You have seen ri what, what rioting is in, 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 in Washington. It was not a good idea. Those rioters who attacked uh, uh, the, the parliament building in Washington. But we are very happy that we have not, uh, our people have not died like they have died in your places. Well, actually, Mr. President, let me just stop you there because obviously we know what coronavirus is. You also are holding rallies the same size, if not bigger than Bobby Wines. So that's, you know, that's one case. But here's the I thing, Mr. President, there are 40, 54 people who were killed in, these, uh, in, 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 in the situation by your security forces in November. Why does he have to campaign in a flak jacket? Why do 54 people have to die? The, the 32 of the 54 were rioters attacking security forces. 
the, the, that's how the, 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 they died. It was, I, I hear you now in, in, in the US talking of insurrection and you are saying insurrection is a bad idea. This was a, was a form of insurrection uh, and, and that's how they were, they were suppressed by uh, when they were attacking security forces. There are others, 22, who died through circumstances which we are still investigating. The UN says we're gravely concerned by the election-related violence, the excessive use of force by security personnel, as well as the increasing crackdown on peaceful protesters, political and civil society leaders, and human rights defenders. So the UN, that's the UN saying that it's the security forces. And your own security force, I mean, to be honest with you, me, with you really shocked me recently, because he said that we are proud of cracking down on reporters. He said, we beat reporters for their own good. I don't understand why you keep putting the blame on them when your security forces are doing this. And what's the point of it? I don't understand. We, we, have, we, we have cameras all over the place. If, if the security forces are the ones who make mistakes, it is easy to see, to, to capture and identify. In any case, the, nobody knows more about Uganda than, than ourselves. I am here. I, I have got a, lo a lot of experience. And I can tell you who is in the wrong and who is in the right. So the, the UN should just, the UN have got enough trouble spots in the world to deal with. Are you basically saying you're above the law? I mean, I'm not sure what you're saying because, you know, human rights is an international concept. And as you know, Bobby Wine is proposing that the International Criminal Court, which is an arm of the United Nations, investigate you and your senior officials for human rights abuses. There's a 41-page brief saying that police and military have deployed, quote, widespread use of shoot to kill, beatings and other violence. If you have all the images and you're confident of your evidence, will you hand it over for such an investigation? Of course, of course, we have no problem. We have no problem at all, because there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide. And uh, by the way, you are dealing with people who know what they are doing. Uh, they, they, we, we don't need lectures from anybody really in the world, because we know what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, P President Trump said that in the United States as well. And you saw, as you mentioned yourself, the incitement to insurrection, the storming of the parliament, the cradle of American democracy by radicals and by insurrectionists. I just wonder what your view on that is. What would you say to President Trump about that? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a lecturer to Americans. They know what they are doing. Uh, but, but insurrection is insurrection, whether it is in the U.S. or in Africa. You, you should uh, regard any extra, extra constitutional actions as, 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 as illegal and, and, and treasonable. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to lecture Americans. They know what they are doing. Well, as you know, the, the House has already um, put forward formally one article of impeachment uh, on the charges of inciting insurrection. So I want to ask you then, if you should lose a fair election, will you accept the result? If I lost a fair election, I would accept the results, of course, because uh, Uganda is not my, my house. I have got my house. I, I will go to my house and, and do my own things if the people of Uganda don't want me to, 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 to help them. With their, with their issues. I, I go and deal with my personal issues. Very happily. I do need to ask you a final question, and that is your, your constant haranguing and harassment of the gay community in Uganda. The head of the gay rights groups there says it's actually a really scary and rough time. LGBT people are fearful to even vote as there is a risk that they will be targeted at the polling stations due to all the hate speeches. What are you afraid of? Why, why does this group, over the years, why is it so utterly oppressed and harassed? Who is, har who is haranguing the homosexuals? Who has harangued them? You, you, you and your, your, your government, your churches talk about them, um, you know, maybe security people, but people in the streets as well. There is a climate of impunity in Uganda for anti-gay opposition and harassment and oppression. Why? Why in 2021 is that the case? 
Now, we have a problem of social imperialism from some parts of the world towards Africa. Homosexuals are not new to Africa. They have been here. We know them, but we have got a different, a different view of them. We think they are deviants. They are people who are deviated from the normal. They are not killed, they are not harangued, they are not persecuted, but we don't promote them. We don't promote them, we don't promote and, and flaunt homosexuality as if it is an alternative way of life. But we don't agree with your, the Western way of promoting homosexuality as if it is an alternative way of life. Well, as you know, they have been targeted, and that's why there is a worry, including by human rights groups. But I want to ask you this. You know, I can see, just like I can see in the United States, when you whip people up with misinformation, disinformation, sometimes lies about people, you can get a frenzy and a mob and a fear and people who don't know where the truth is. And I know that in parts of Africa, homosexuals are promoted by the church, by others, as deviants, as you're saying, as pedophiles. And it's just not true. And I wonder whether you think that you're a Christian, your wife is a Christian, whether you think that's charitable, and whether you think that perhaps you can actually move forward with a different view to that segment of your population. Because as you say, they are Ugandans, they're there to stay. It's not fair. No, the, 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 the prevalent opinion among our, our population now is that the, the homosexuals are a departure from normal. If our, uh, our opinion changes in future, let it, let it change organically, but not imposed on us by others, other people. But, no, but nobody's imposing on you, Mr. President. It's not like the international community is telling you anything in this regard about promotion or anything. It's just about human rights. Mr. President, thanks for joining us from Kampala. Thank you very much.